At times, especially with new regiments to the Army, smallpox inoculations would be given and that unit would remain isolated from the Army. There was very little free time in the Continental Service, but the men usually enjoyed playing card games and keeping journals. Very few enlisted men wrote letters, and one must be reminded that a great number of the common men were illiterate. Because of this, storytelling, song singing, and other pastimes occurred in the camps. One activity, pranks, was quite popular among the rank and file. The men were required to dig their bathroom trench, a latrine, on the opposite end of camp away from the kitchen areas and maintain a high sense of hygiene. Uniform company or regimental kitchens were designed to create a central and practical location for cooking rations. They resembled a big ring in the ground and a noticeable potato mound of dirt above. Rations were in part food, beer or whiskey, soap, and candles. Cooking would be done individually as a mess or as a company, depending on the situation. There were not many great recipes. You either boiled in a mess pot, baked it, or got some grease in a pan and fried it. There was a constant and nagging issue with supply. There were times when the men would go so hungry that they would catch an animal or a fish and just eat it raw. Usually on campaign, men would receive rations, consisting of fresh or salted beef, pork or fish, with flour or cornmeal. Vinegar was issued, as was whiskey, but vegetables were always in short supply. If the men did receive vegetables, peas were the norm. There would be whole days the men would go without meat, sometimes for weeks at a time eating just breads. The men would cook on hot rocks next to the fire, mess pots or kettles if they had them, Select women were hired to do the laundry work and other sundry duties. These women were also, like the men, heavily regulated and could have their rations cut and be flogged for such crimes as leaving their post and deserting to the enemy.
This shirt is awash with grime. Could I have it properly and thoroughly cleaned? Put it over there. I have to put it into our account book. Soldier, have you got any soap for us? Well, I have not here, but one of my messmates has. Well, go get it, as we have none. And after we're through with that batch, I'll cook the rations. Being a professional army, the doctrine for crimes was simple and brutal, flogging for nearly every offense. Every action of the Continental Soldier was to be regulated and scrutinized. Some soldiers had to learn the hard way. All soldiers had been employed by the engineers to erect defenses along all fronts, but especially the chain of forts along the North or Hudson River. Continentals learned how to make fascines, gabines, revetments, readouts, and the like. The soldier, whether in camp or on active marching and campaigning, would be ordered to build fortifications, usually with the direction of a French or Polish engineering officer who were assisting the American cause. By 1779, a new continental unit, the Corps of Sappers and Miners, was created to help teach the rest of the army this art and science. The Continental Soldier learned the art of building gabines, which were wooden baskets to build dirt walls, chevaux de frise, which were X-shaped defensive obstructions, frays, which were sharp pointed defensive poles, or fascines, bundles of saplings tied together used to form steps or walls and fortifications. Continentals took turns on regular sentry, picket, or outpost duty. These men were the ones who provided absolute security to all the camps. A system is taught to all the men on how to handle threats to the Army's perimeter. For the men, this is a big moment. General Anthony Wayne has given strict orders for the men not to load their muskets. Some officers have made the men pull their flints and to rely on the bayonet. For General Wayne! Let me see those papers. Keep them dry, if you would. Over. They're good. Let them pass. They are good. Thank you! The men seem to have mastered the art of guard duty, scrubbing their gear, digging latrines, and drilling smartly. But what of it on the battlefield?
that? Who comes that? Dozens of men were killed here tonight, hundreds wounded and maimed. The bayonet was used to overwhelm the post. The blood runs in rivulets and pools in the dirt and rocks. Four years of killing have gone by, but more years of killing until the ending. There will be more bloody fields, wrecked bodies, and shattered lives. But as Thomas Paine once wrote to the men, tyranny like hell is not easily conquered. These Continentals have here on this field proven that they may not just equal the British on the field, but now overtake them in perfected discipline and resolve. The Prussian exercises gave these men the skills, and Baron von Steuben and the leaders gave the Continentals the belief that they, and not the British, are the best soldiers in the world. This spirit in the land would carry this army forward, through the hardships, Forge Nation.